Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at errors in PowerShell. Now, I know you guys might be wondering, well, we've already seen error handling with try, catch, and try, catch finally in the beginner tutorials. Today, we're actually going to be taking a look at the try, catch as well, but we're actually going to be taking a look at an alternative to the try, catch to see what other options in PowerShell we have to actually handle our different errors. And before we actually get into that, I just want to get into some just nuances with PowerShell or some really some basic details on how errors function in PowerShell and give you guys some examples. Uh, so there are two types of errors in PowerShell. There are terminating errors and non terminating errors. Uh, so terminating errors is something that is going to put a stop in your script. Um, and then a non terminating error is something where the error will be then pushed to the pipeline and then the script will keep running. Now the try catch statement only works with terminating errors. Uh, we're actually going to see that in an example. Now there are ways to make all commandlets become a terminating error on an error. And we're going to see that as well. But we're all going to see some other methods of how we can actually catch those errors without making them terminating errors so we can actually silently continue on errors and just gather all the errors and then do something at the end of our script with them or maybe immediately after check if errors happen and then do something based on that so let's actually go ahead and let's get started with taking a look at a terminating error versus a non-terminating error so let's go ahead and let's start here. So what we're going to want to do is we're just going to create a array of services here. So I'm going to actually just go ahead and create a variable called service list. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that an array and we are going to make it contain two services that don't exist. And they're going to be test one and test two. And then we are going to do a for each service in service list. And then what we want to do first for the terminating errors, the simplest way to get a terminating error very easily in PowerShell is to actually just make a typo on the commandlet. So instead of saying stop process, we're going to do stop process, but we're going to leave out an S here and we're going to put the name service. And we're going to see what that ends up looking like. So we're going to see we do get our errors and we get the, the stop process is not recognized by uh, it's not recognized as a name of a commandlet. And if we actually go ahead and we put this in a try catch here. Let's put the try and then a catch here. And all we're going to do is just a write output and we're just going to output the word caught. So it caught the error. So if we actually look at this, we actually catch the errors and we actually get that it is caught. So that is a terminating error. Now, if we look, we're going to take the same code and we're just going to replace the stop process with the actual command name of stop process spelled correctly. And if we actually run this, we are actually going to see that we don't get the caught verbiage from our right output. We actually just get the errors as if the try catch did not even work. Now there are ways to actually make this work so we can actually do an error action, which we've seen before. We do have quite a bit of options and one of them is called stop. If we actually perform stop here and we run this, we will see that we actually do get the exceptions that do get caught. So those are the differences between terminating and non-terminating. So if you're finding that your try catch isn't actually catching the errors and you still are getting errors popping up in your script, it could be because that commandlet doesn't actually have an error action of stop by default. It might actually just have a continue by default. So that's where you would want to go ahead and set up that error action if you want to use the try catch or try catch finally. Now, there are ways around this, as I mentioned earlier, where we don't actually have to use the try catch at all. So once again, we're actually just going to copy this example here. 
And we are actually just going to remove this whole try catch. We don't actually need the try catch in this example. We're just going to do a stop process. And what we actually want to do here is specify an error variable instead of an error action. And all I like to do here in this case is I like to put a little plus beside it. And we're going to see why we actually like to do this plus here. I can do an example right afterwards. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to call it the stop proc errors with an S. And if we actually go ahead and we run this, we're going to see that the errors still output to the screen. So maybe we don't actually want that. But what we can actually do now as well is if we look at our variable stop proc errors, we'll actually see that it actually stores our errors here. So we can actually see that the count of errors is going to be two because we have our two services in the list. And we can actually even do a for each x in stop proc errors. And then we can actually just display our error. So if we do the x dot exception dot message, we can actually see our two errors that were called uh, and cannot find a process with the name of test one, cannot find a process with the name of test two. So these are very, very handy. Now, let's say you actually did not put this little plus here. What's going to happen? So let's just copy this over here. And we're going to remove the plus and we're just going to remove the S. This way it's going to create a new variable for us. If we actually run this here, you can see we still get the two errors that pop up. But what happens now when we go into our stop proc errors and we do a count here, we only get a count of one. Now, this is because if we actually go look at it as well, is we only get the test two. So this one will overwrite the error variable. So this will only ever store one error. And if another one happens, it will overwrite it. That's why I always like to put this little plus. It then creates an array list of the errors and we'll keep adding to them. This way you can actually stack all your errors, especially in a script. This can be very useful. Maybe your script is doing a lot of different things and maybe it can error at a bunch of different places. So you're going to want to store all the different errors that you can get. What I actually like to do is I like to create all these different error, error variables and put them at different spots in the scripts. So I know what spots the errors are actually coming from and then they'll have like the list of errors. So this one, I would know that it would be in the stop process. Maybe I have another part in my script that is for start processes and I would have the start proc errors and so on. Um, very useful for a automation of accounts, um, different files. Like let's say you're creating home drives for people. If those errors, you would have home drive errors. Maybe if it's during the account creation in Active Directory, maybe you can have a new account creation errors. Uh, if it's something maybe during a modify of an account, maybe you can have a modify user errors, just a bunch of different area variables to where you can easily say, like easily separate them. And then you can write them all to like a different file and then attach them to an email and then have that sent to you at the end of the script execution. So this is a very good way to use that error variable. Now, as we saw, we still get the output of the errors. So of course, there are ways to easily prevent that here. So let me just remove this and we're just going to work with our array version here. What we can do is we can do the error, error action and then do the silently continue. And then all we need to do is just do this here. And there it is. Now we don't get any errors on the screen. We can actually just reset our error array list here. So let's do that. And there it is. So we can actually execute the script. It doesn't actually display the errors on the screen, but it does keep them in that array. And then what we can actually do is even do an if stop proc errors. And then this will be if the errors actually exist, then go ahead and do this. So if we actually go ahead and put it to null, if we actually go in here, 
we'll see if nothing really happens. Uh, but if we actually run both of these here, because we know that, that will happen, we will actually get our errors. And what we can even do here is if we actually take this service list here, just put this right here. And uh, let me just get a service here to where we can actually stop. Uh, that I know will not cause me any issues here, which is usually the, I like to work with the print, uh, the print spooler, uh, so spooler, spooler, spooler. All right, so it is running here. So all we're gonna do here is put this to uh, spooler. And now if we actually go ahead and we run this, we'll see that we actually get none with the spooler found, uh, which is fine here. Uh, it should have actually found something. Uh, so what we can do here is let's just do cooler. Don't. Oh, I guess that would make the difference here. The spooler is not a process. It is a service here. Sorry about that. And let's change that back to service. And let's go ahead and let's run that here. As you can see, we got no errors that popped up, but then we also, uh, the service. Uh, so here we actually still got an error because it cannot be opened. I'm not running this as administrator. Uh, so we do still get that error message, but you do have the idea there that if we do not get any errors, it will not pop up. And then when the errors actually do happen, we can actually do an if statement and it will capture those errors and we can either add them to an email or add them to a file. And that will work that way. Now there is something else that is built in to PowerShell for errors as well, which is actually just the error array list. So if we actually look at this error array list, we will actually see all the errors that we got during the filming of this video here. And what is neat about this is, so here's our last one. We have the stop service print spooler. So if we actually try something else here, if we do a stop service and then name uh, test service, and we actually go ahead and we run this here. And then we go look at our error variable. We scroll all the way to the top here we will get that the stop service. So if we actually look at the error and then go ahead and look at array index zero, we will see that that is the most recent error that we got. And then if we look at one, that is actually the error that we got just before that one. So what it does is it stores all the errors that have happened in your session. And then if a new error happens, it goes to the top of the list or the first item in the list. The last item in the list would be the first error that you encountered. This could be very, very useful, again, for different troubleshooting purposes. Or if you just want to gather all the errors that happen in your script and then send them to an administrator at the end, this is a very, very great variable to actually use and just gather all of it and then just send it off. This way you don't really have to worry about creating all the different variables uh, that happened. It's just you also don't have any real way of handling them. If you want specific actions to happen for specific errors, that is where the error variables or the try catches really come in handy. But those are all the different things that you can do with PowerShell for error handling. Uh, there are some neat things in PowerShell 7 that you will also see. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and let's take a look here at a variable which is called error view. And again, this is new to PowerShell 7 and only available in PowerShell 7. So if you are using 
uh, PowerShell 5.2 still or PowerShell 6, this will not work. Uh, so here we actually have the error view. We actually have a concise view. Now there are actual multiple views available. Um, there's three different views. There are a normal view, there is a category view and a concise view. Um, so we can actually change that here. So if we actually go ahead and just try out some different views here, let's do a test connection and let's do the target name and let's do a fake computer here and then a count of one. So if we actually go ahead and we run this. We will get test connection, testing connection to computer, fake computer, failed, cannot resolve the target name. But now if we go ahead and we go ahead and put error view equals normal view. And we go ahead and we run the same code. We will see that our error is quite a bit more detailed. We actually have the same thing at the top, but we'll also get at line one, character one, and we'll get the category info, the fully uh, qualified error ID as well. Now the other view is the category view, which is if we go ahead and do that here, and we run both of these. We will see that we get resource unavailable, fake computer, it is a string, it is from test connection, ping exception. I definitely prefer the concise view. Uh, definitely just makes reading errors a little bit easier, um, especially compared to the normal view. It has a lot of information and I find the category view doesn't have all the information that you might necessarily want. Uh, so that's where I definitely prefer the concise view here. So if we go ahead and we just take a look at that here once again. Again, we just get a nice simple test connection, testing connection to the computer. Failed, cannot resolve the target name. A very simple error message and just a little bit easier to look at compared to the normal view and a little bit easier to understand compared to the category view. And that is it for errors in PowerShell. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have anything you guys would like me to do a deep dive on for PowerShell or anything else, please let me know in the comment section down below. Please also be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.